Welcome back, America. We're here with Innes Freedom, who really is heroic in so many ways. I mean, the gentleman was a basketball player. He loses his career because he stands on principle. He opposes terrorism. That's the bottom line. He opposes terrorism and terrorist regimes. And so, Freedom, I asked you before the break, uh -huh. if you were to go back to Turkey or extradited to Turkey or worse, if you were kidnapped while traveling, let's say, uh -huh. overseas, and they brought you back to Turkey, what would happen to you? You know, I have 12 arrest warning for me. They actually put my name on Interpol list. So in their eyes, I'm an international criminal. I actually have a list here, and I can only go to 29 countries in the world. And if I go any other countries besides than this, you know, I will be extradited back to Turkey. I mean, forget about all this, but I haven't seen my family almost 10 years now. I don't even know what my mom and my, my dad looks like. My sister got married. I couldn't even call her and say congratulations, you know? So, uh, because if they get in touch with me, it's a, for in their eyes, it's like a terrorist act and they will be all in jail. So they're even scared to pick up the phone and, you know, send me a text message. So if I ever go back to Turkey, you know, you would not hear from me ever again, which, I mean, they put my dad in jail, but we put so much pressure from here to Turkey, they had to let him go. You know, they came to my house, they actually raided the whole house and they took every electronics away because they wanted to see if I am still in contact with my family or not. They couldn't find no evidence and they put my dad in jail. My family, actually the letter is still out there on the internet, my family, had to publicly disown me so the Turkish government would leave them alone, you know? So, and they've been getting harassed in, in the streets of Turkey, and they have done nothing wrong. I am the one talking about mm -hmm. the political prisoners and human rights violations, and that made me a terrorist. If that is gonna make me a terrorist, I'll take it. But it, it's a sad situation because Turkey could have been a bridge of Islam and West. But now all these problems are happening. You know, Turkey is harassing Armenia, Turkey is harassing uh, Greece, Turkey is harassing Kurdish people. Erdogan wants to be the leader of the Muslim world. He says he cares about the Palestinians. Why don't you talk about, the, you know, Uyghurs in China? They're Muslim, too. Why don't you, why, why are you bombing Kurdish cities? They're Muslim, too, you know? So it's just all hypocrisy, and he want to just... He has this crazy thought in his head that he wants to be the leader of the Islamic world and he wants to be the Khalifa that we say, but everybody knows, you know, his, he's a dictator, he's a thug, and he literally runs the country like a mafia leader. And uh, how many Palestinians at Gaza has he offered to take it to Turkey? Zero. Literally zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you literally, if you really care about the, the innocent life of Palestinians, then why don't you you know, let him in Turkey. You know, he's, he's letting all the Kamas terrorists in. He's letting all the ISIS terrorists in. He's letting all the uh, Hezbollah uh, terrorists in, Al-Qaeda terrorists in. But when it comes to innocent Palestinians that he said he cares about, he said, nah, we good. I'm like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's such a shame because, you know, people need to say enough is enough. You know, it starts with our administration. Our, you know, President Biden cannot be solved on these dictatorships, you know, starting with Turkey, um, China, Russia, or, you know, Iran. I mean, this all happened because of the, you know, the $6 billion uh, fund, you know? Um, but we just need to say enough is enough, and we just have to be, be the America that everyone thinks we are. And... Uh we're not the America everyone thinks we are with an administration that appeases mm. these very, very evil people who slaughter yeah. people, who torture people, who yeah. silence people. Why do you think the Biden administration is so weak? Um, I think, you know, when it comes to uh, some of the, you know, dictatorship, they think they just want to have a better relationship with these uh, countries, you know, but they, all these dictatorships taking advantage of that. You know, I'm a, I'm a, like, listen, I'm a U.S. citizen. I've been trying to meet with President Biden to talk about my family situation for the last, since he took the office. You know, I actually have a conversation with one of the Democratic uh, senator. I asked him, like, Senator, do you think President Biden knows my story? He said, absolutely. He said, well, I've been trying to get in touch with him and maybe have a conversation with him or someone from his office, someone from his administration. He said, 
sorry, but they're not going to meet with you. I was like, why? They said, well, because of Turkey, because of Erdogan, because of them being a NATO ally. I was, I told them, I was like, so you pretty much telling me that they're scared to meet with a 30 year old NBA player. He said, I cannot say that they're scared, but yes, they are scared. Well, he seems to be able to meet with everybody else, including people yeah. from CARE, which is a Hamas related mm -hmm. group and, uh, yep. and all kinds of people, but he won't meet with you. That's pretty damn disgusting. Look, I want to thank you, Freedom, for the public stands that you take, for putting your life, your career on the line, and, uh, and God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for giving me the platform, man. I appreciate that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.